Murphy. Yes. Hi, welcome to our show, Stories Worth Telling. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here with us. Now, I tell me your name. Oh, thank you. Harry Danis. Harry Danis. Right. Tell me about yourself, Harry. Uh, what would you like to know? <laughs> well, you have quite a history, don't you? Uh, if you say so, I, I will guess so. Okay. Uh, anyway. Uh, You're in the war. I was. Tell me about that. Uh, I enlisted in 1943 and uh, was sent by the uh, government to various uh, schools. I became commissioned at Yale University in 1945 and proceeded on to Iwo Jima. Whoa, 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 stop. You're giving me a lot of information. Okay. okay. So you were commissioned at Yale University to go to Iwo Jima? Well, I wasn't commissioned to go to Iwo Jima, but that was the next uh, element uh, on, on my uh, uh, itinerary. Itinerary, perhaps. yes. Okay. So, what did you learn at Yale University? I was uh, trained in what they called communications, and uh, it was. Uh, I think I read some place cryptography. Cryptography. So what is cryptography? Cryptography is uh, a method of uh, communicating with another party, and uh, we're playing games with the uh, language and ha have a code, so to speak. It's a kind of a code, like like a cryptogram, like something that it a is. Let one letter. And that's what crypto means. Okay, okay, so you learn how to do that. So you're a kind of a code breaker or a code developer. You're giving me a lot of credit, but uh, anyway, it's the knowledge of the process. Okay, so you went to Yale, and then I think if we step backwards, you followed in your brother's footsteps. Uh, my brother had enlisted uh, and was on the uh, Lexington aircraft carrier and in every major battle in the Pacific. And I have a high regard for his contribution. Nice. Well, thank you for your service as a veteran, a WW2 veteran. I just did what I was told to do. Wow. Well, thank <laughs> you for that. And how old are you now, Harry? I'm 95, believe it or not. No, I don't want to believe that. <laughs> you don't look 95. And I'm very fortunate to be this age. Yes. And get this far. Yes, you've accomplished a lot. So you finished Yale, and then what happened? Uh, and uh, I got my commission there and uh, was further trained by the uh, Army uh, Air Corps uh, in cryptography and uh, other items. And uh, the next thing I knew I was on a boat and I think I was, I was headed for Hawaii. Hawaii? But, uh, all we did was stop there and get filled with water. Past Saipan and I said, gee, I don't want to go there. They're still fighting there. And uh, we passed Saipan. I said, oh, I'm not going there. The only other place I know they're fighting is uh, Iwo Jima. I ended up on that island. Right. That's a pretty famous island, Iwo Jima. It is. So tell me about that experience. Uh, I was part of the uh, Manhattan Project and didn't know uh, I was part of it. In other words, uh, I think all the stories uh, that you hear about the Marines is actually true. But it uh, uh, covered over the purpose of uh, our uh, taking Iwo Jima. It, was, it actually, in my mind, it foreshortened the war by four or five years and saved close to a million lives, American lives, and I would say uh, uh, about three million Japanese lives. So. Uh, uh, I equate the uh, uh, Iwo Jima to the Battle of Bunker Hill, believe it or not. I think it was that important. And it was the first, uh, I was surprised to find that it was 
the first Japanese territory that we ever took. When I say took, I, I'm talking about battle because everything else the Japanese had uh, uh, conquered in the Pacific Ocean and, and none of the property was there. They were very zealous about Iwo Jima. Okay, well, it's a beautiful island, and it, was it a isn't a beautiful island. No. It was a volcanic island, and uh, loaded with sulfur and death, and uh, they were intermixed smells. I can still smell the smells uh, seventy years later. Wow, that's historic. That's it's uh, quite an experience you had. So tell me about the Manhattan Project. Well, the Manhattan Project was the first atom bomb. Okay. And uh, Iwo Jima was, uh, when we took the island, uh, the purpose of taking the island was to f find an air-sea rescue station for flyers uh, that were go going on to the B-29s. And I think there was a, a big... Uh, uh, Mr. MacArthur said, I shall return, and he meant I shall return. He was land conscious uh, and going through uh, land spaces to uh, uh, co uh, overcome the objective. Uh, Nimitz was a, a Navy person and he listened to General LeMay who thought that we could bomb the Japanese out, which we did. And uh, anyway, uh, Iwo Jima was the first Japanese territory that we ever occupied. Hmm. And I'm sorry we gave it back to the uh, Japanese. But hmm. Hmm. Well, that's pretty historic, and you have lessons that you learned when you were in the, doing uh, your service. What was yes, I, I know I don't control too much, and I know other people matter, and uh, we are a team. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of things that are going on that we have no comprehension about, that somebody else is doing something for us. So respect your elders was something else that I kind of inferred from what you've said, or respect people of higher rank. Repeat that question. Respect, respect people of higher rank or respect your elders is something else. Uh, yeah, that was a good part of it. Uh, and uh, being in the service was an easy thing because you had an up and a down and if somebody had more bars than you did, you respected them. And, uh, if they had lesser buyers, you could give orders. So it's uh, uh, very comforting to know that there's a very definite stepstone relationship in the service. Right, right. Well, thank you for your service again. And how is it for you since you've left the military? Uh, it's been a very exciting time, uh, and I'm... Uh, I think we live in the best country in the world, and uh, I am stunned that our forefathers were able to create a constitution uh, that is so flexible and uh, that we're still able to uh, have differences of, of opinion and it's still at the same time uh, be able to accomplish uh, forward steps. Okay, Harry, one of the things that I brought with me today is something from your home. Can you tell me about this? Uh, that's a uh, recognition from Harry Truman saying thank you for your service. Harry Truman, Harry S. Truman? Uh, yes, former president, and I think uh, all commissioned people who did uh, were engaged in battle receive something like that? That's pretty phenomenal, and his signature on there on the bottom. Yeah, too. I, I was pleased to get that. And there's a medal here. What is that all about? 
Well, you don't have your glasses on today. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, what does it say? It says, in honor of those who served, commemorative Air Force, keep them flying. Oh, yes. Uh, we had a song in the, uh, there was no Air Force at the time that I enlisted. It was uh, Army Air Corps. And the Air Force didn't come into existence until about 10 or 15 years after the war ended. And people don't know that. They thought we had an Air Force all the time. So but we didn't. The Army Air Corps, the Air Corps was a division of the Army. Yes, it was. And so now we have the Army and we have the, the Air Force. The infantry, the cavalry, the field artillery are the finest kind of soldiers yet must always grounded be, but when you see planes in the air, hear thundering motors roar, it's the men who keep them flying in the Army Air Corps. So hail to the Army, hail to the Corps, hail to all the airmen who span the skies of yore. We're on the road to victory, thumbs up forevermore. So. <laughs> I think that's phenomenal. Oh, and that's wow. a song that you learned a couple years ago? Uh, no, I didn't learn that. We used to sing that all the time. <laughs> was, I'm joking. I know you learned it a long time ago. And who's this handsome devil? Uh, I don't know. He's some. <laughs> That would be you, right, in yes, this picture? Yes. Uh, uh, I was uh, saluted by the uh, American Hellenic Educational Progressive Association for Service, and it's uh, an article that appeared in a, a newsletter that they publish monthly. So you're Greek. You're of Greek descent. Uh, my... my uh, Last name is in the center of the Iliad, said a professor of ancient Greek. Tell me about that. Uh, <laughs> Kitty, you're embarrassing me. Oh, come on. It's a great story. Uh, I had uh, known a grandfather who was sent by the Patriarchate in Constantinople to administer to the immigrant population in Thompsonville, Connecticut. Thompsonville, Connecticut was making uh, big low Sanford rugs and they were the biggest uh, carpet manufacturer in the world. Uh, the problem was they couldn't get employees and, and uh, they were hiring all the immigrants. Uh, so many people of uh, Greek descent were uh, grateful to be coming to America, ended up in Thompsonville, Connecticut in the mill where they could get a job, including my mother. Anyway. Uh, you said your mother came over when she was 11. She was. And uh, she enjoyed uh, America because she could walk to the corner and buy uh, an ice cream cone. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Those are happy memories. They are happy memories. Those are happy memories. So you grew up in which town? In Springfield, Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, Mom and Dad were uh, living there and we frequented uh, Enfield, Connecticut uh, because uh, Papu or Grandfather was administering his church there. So your, fa your father, My your, your grandfather, Papu, is the Greek name for grandpa? Uh, yes, it is. And Yaya, I heard, is the Greek yes, word for yes. grandmother. Uh, my mother was too young to be a Yaya. Oh, she didn't want to be a Yaya. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, your mom, you said, was an artist. Uh, I, I think she was, uh, and I think all, all those uh, people, uh, foreign born, had to make do with uh, uh, whatever they had, and you had to develop a uh, 
sense of uh, existence and a sense of uh, using things as you got them and uh, when you got them and using them at an optimum. You call that ingenuity, right? We used to call oh, that... Okay, whatever it is. Well, no, I agree with you. It's, it was being industrious and creative and taking what you have and using your resources and... Kate, we got to talk about you and uh, the fact that you're running for the Board of Education. No, 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 no. We're not here to do that. We're here to talk about you. Uh -oh. But I do want you to tell everybody, everyone about your your artistic ability and your architecture. Uh, I had been employed uh, by the General Electric Company in Pittsfield. Uh, before, Pittsfield, Massachusetts, Pittsfield, right? Pittsfield, Massachusetts, before I went overseas. Okay. Uh, got to be a part of Occupy Japan, being the youngest member in my, uh, or youngest officer in my group, I got to stay on longer and got shifted around and was plugging holes of people who were being discharged. So one of the holes that I plugged was uh, Occupied Japan. And I m remember him clearly, and there's Captain Resnick on the deck as we're going home. Harry, what are you gonna do when you get home? And I thought of my time with the General Electric. I said, I wanna be an engineer and an artist too. I don't wanna be give anything up. He says, why don't you try architecture? I ran to the library, looked in the books, and decided that was the thing for me because it uh, combined both the arts and the sciences, and I still feel it does. Nice. And what have you designed locally? What would we know you for? Uh, locally, we're known for the uh, designing the East Lime Town Hall. Oh, that's a beautiful facility. Thank you and the Niantic Village or Mitchell's Complex. Nice, very in beautiful. In the center of town. And we had done work for the uh, University of Connecticut. And uh, anyway, I was interested in doing anything that was a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I've been to your house a couple of times. Yes, you have. And when I saw your house, it reminded me of one of my favorite artists, and do you know who that would be? Frank Lloyd Wright? Exactly. Uh, he was one of my favorites. Uh, do you in, think he in influenced? In fact, uh, I thought of studying under him at one time, and we visited his home in uh, Arizona, which was Taliesin West. And I told my wife, I'm not going to school with this guy. And she said, why not? He's doing beautiful things. I said, the best I could hope to do with me is be a little Frank Lloyd Wright, and I don't want to do that. I want to be a big bum Harry Dana. <laughs> well, we influence each other, though, and if you rub elbows <laughs> with somebody. But uh, I still admire what he did, and he, he uh, was part of the art uh, component, so to speak, in the architecture. And Mies van der Rohe, and people don't know that the first skyscraper was done in Chicago. Uh, and, uh, Is that the Wrigley Building? I forgot what, uh, what the name of the building was, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, Chicago is a, f a fermenting area for engineering kinds of concepts and Mies van der Rohe had done a lot of work there, and he was uh, strict, uh, strictly an engineer. So I tried to combine uh, what I learned from him and his capabilities and, and join them with Mr. Wright's stuff, and I become a little Harry Danos. I love that. Well, I think you're a big Harry Danos. <laughs> so you're very kind. We're, we're really lucky to have you and to know you. So tell me, what are some things that you learned from that architecture engineer background? What are some things that you see that you'd like to share about that whole experience? Uh, well, I, I think uh, 
elder people. If I didn't have that, I I don't think I'd ever be uh, had reached 95 years of age. Tell me about that. And uh, because I think it's an exploratory uh, situation where I know I don't have control. I, I'm not. Uh, the earth doesn't belong to me, I belong to the earth. Mm, no, that's very wise. And you painted, and what is your favorite medium? I, li I like watercolor now, but uh, as an architect, we had to uh, present uh, our, our thoughts in a concrete fashion, and I used to deal with opaque colors. Mm -hmm. uh, watercolor is not the same thing. Uh, so you sketch your design, well draft your design, and then lay it out and then... And uh, watercolor I think teaches you how to see, how to look at, and know that you can't control everything to precisely. Uh, dealing with oils or opaque paints makes life simple. Positives in, positives out. Watercolor is not that way. You're dealing with a, uh, um, water which uh, reacts differently to different surfaces and uh, uh, is not the same as uh, dealing with opaque materials. I just say it's tricky. It, uh, <laughs> okay, tricky is is not the word. It's certainly uh, uh, a learning process. It is a learning process. And didn't you tell me once it might take more than one try to get something to a uh, level of satisfaction? The, the uh, accomplished watercolorists say after you throw the first 2,000 away, then you start keeping some of them. Okay, and I brought this picture. Uh, my son, uh, Michael, who became the uh, uh, youngest uh, auxiliary coast guard commander in the history of New London, saw me painting one day. He said, what are you doing, Dad? I said, we're painting in watercolor. He loved the sea. And uh, I said, come on, let's try it. So that was a joint project. And it's uh, sh showing how somebody with no experience at all can get excited about the medium. And uh, he didn't feel confident at first. What, dear? He didn't feel confident at first. Uh, no. Uh, and uh, it's different than uh, b painting positive uh, things. Uh, and in a positive fashion. Uh, it's 70 years later and I'm still learning how to do watercolor. So it's a continual learning process. Now, Harry, you're interested in maybe doing some instruction. Uh, we, I had a house that recently went down in a fire and I've been getting a great deal of help from uh, neighbors and the VA and uh, people have been great. But anyway... Uh, if you taught classes, you would teach it maybe at a coffee house or someplace uh, like that? Uh, teach at... Uh, I would like to give something back that has been given to me. And the uh, VFW uh, has a nice uh, facility overlooking McCook's Park. And uh, you have kind of an outline here yes. for what your classes and, might look and, like. Uh, we'll be, we'll, I'll be trying to teach uh, watercolor through uh, using them as a, uh, a base, and all the proceeds would go to the uh, VFW and, and uh, to help other veterans if we can. Right. You're 95 years old, Harry, and you're still giving back. I think that's really amazing. Uh, I'm a very fortunate man. Uh, much has been given to me, and I can't say how grateful I am for uh, contributions by others 
to my existence. Well, and we're grateful that we have you. So if you were to teach these classes first, you would teach them a little bit about the art theory, what uh, the, materials. The, uh, uh, towns like Rockport, Ogunquit, Maine are on the map. I think Niantic is uh, natural for doing that, but it's not on the map for uh, teaching artwork, but uh, we've got the sea, we've got uh, trees, uh, surroundings that are outstanding, and uh, the VFW station is uh, located there. So we'll be uh, planning to, uh, through the VFW, so if people are interested in getting classes with you, we'll have well, to figure out a and, way. And it's broken down into uh, steps. First of all, what am I talking about? Uh, you're asking questions about what is watercolor. And the real name for watercolor is transparent watercolor. And uh, what do you need to uh, do painting? And there's so many materials out there. Uh, we've got to introduce you to what watercolor really is. And it's a uh, transparent medium. You're painting with water, which reacts differently to different surfaces. Uh, and the, the color in the water comes by either uh, pigment or uh, a dye, and they don't inter intermix with one another too well. So... Uh, well, like you said, it's a process. It's, it's a an, process. It's a process and you get better with it. So some people are already into watercolor and uh, doing that, and we'll have the course broken up into two steps. Okay. The first, uh, first step is an introduction to it right. and will help you choose materials and uh, help you understand what what's this guy saying? What are we talking about? Carrie, we're starting to run out of time. Our time has flown by together and I love every minute, but people will be able to get in touch with you and we'll figure out a way for people to reach out to you, probably through the veterans Yes. Uh, uh, keep your eye on the newspapers. Okay. We'll put something in the paper. We'll figure that out for you. Uh, and uh, uh, keep your uh, keep posted because the VFW is going to be the uh, uh, coordinator of all of this uh, thing. And and uh, as I said, proceeds will be uh, Taking made care to of our veterans. benefit other veterans. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you so uh, much, Harry. And, and uh, I got to give you a commercial. Uh, coming back from the war, I thought my job was over, but it isn't over. So I'm glad people like you are running for boards of education and things of that nature. And I hope, uh, uh, I think you're a necessity. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here today with us. Wow. We're, we're done. That's it. That was easy. Wow.